In this video, we're going to derive the formula for the inertia of a hollow cylinder. So let's begin with a picture. So let's say this is our cylinder. And let's say this is the inside part of that cylinder. And then this is going to be the axis of rotation. R1 is going to be the radius of the inside part of the hollow cylinder. R2 is the outer radius. So we have the inner radius, the outer radius. And let's say this is some generic point. The distance between the axis of rotation and that generic point, that's going to be lowercase r. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'll try to put it here. Now, the distance between the inner radius and that same point that's going to be dr. And the length of the cylinder is going to be L. Now, for a generic cylinder, we know the volume of a cylinder. The volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times height, where this is r and this is h. But for this example, h is the equivalent of L. So the volume of a cylinder is going to be pi r squared times L. Now, density is mass over volume. If you multiply both sides by v, you get that mass is density times volume. If we take the differential of both sides, we get that dm is p dv. Now, what I want to do is I want to get dv from this equation. In order to do that, I need to differentiate both sides. On the left, we'll have just dv. On the right, l is a constant, so we're not going to differentiate that. r is what changes in this equation. The derivative of r squared is going to be 2r dr. So we get that dv is 2 pi r l dr. So I'm going to replace dv with this expression here. So we get that dm is p times 2 pi rl dr. Now, in order to get the inertia, we can use this formula. The inertia is equal to the integral of r squared dm. So what we can do at this point is replace dm with this expression. So we get that the inertia is going to be the integral. We're going to integrate it. Since the mass is in this region, it's between r1 and r2. We are going to integrate it from r1 to r2, from the inner radius to the outer radius. So we're going to integrate it from r1 to r2. And then we have r squared, and then dm is p times 2 pi rl dr. So I'm going to move all the constants to the front. So 2 pi is a constant, 
lowercase p, or technically rho, that's the density. So we're assuming we have a uniform density throughout the cylinder. So the density is going to be constant. The length of the cylinder is constant as well. And then we have the integral from r1 to r2. We have r squared times r, which is r to the third power, and then dr. So now at this point, we could find the integral of r to the third. So that's going to be r to the fourth over four integrated from r1 to r2. So I'm going to move the four to the front. So we have two pi rho times l over four, and then r to the fourth evaluated from r1 to r2. Two over four is one half, so we have pi rho times L over two. Now plugging in the top one into R to the fourth, we get R2 to the fourth power, and then minus plug in the lower limit of integration R1 into R4, we get R1 to the fourth power. Now we could use the difference of perfect squares formula to factor r squared to the fourth power minus, I mean r2 to the fourth power minus r1 to the fourth power. So using the difference of squares formula, we have pi rho times l over 2. And then it's going to be, to go from a squared to a, we need to take the square root. So the square root of r2 to the fourth power is going to be r2 squared to go from b squared to b we got to take the square root the square root of r1 to the fourth power is just r1 squared one of them is going to be plus the other is going to be minus so this is what we have at this point Now, let's talk about the volume of a cylinder. We know for a regular cylinder, with the radius r height h, the volume is pi r squared times h. But what is the volume of a hollow cylinder? Let's break up the cylinder into two parts. So we have the large cylinder. which the radius of the large cylinder, we define it to be R2, and it has the length L. And then we have the small cylinder inside the large cylinder. With radius R1 and length L. So V2, let's call that the volume of the large cylinder. That's pi R2 squared and H is L. Now, the volume of the small cylinder, V1, is pi r1 squared L. Now, in order to calculate the volume of the hollow cylinder, so just the parts in between the inner and the outer cylinder, to get the volume of the hollow cylinder, we need to subtract these two, and we'll get what's in the middle. So the volume of the hollow cylinder is going to be V2 minus V1. So V2 is pi R2 squared times L, and V1 is pi R1 squared times L. So what I'm going to do is factor out the constants, pi L, and we're left with R squared, 
r2 squared minus r1 squared. Now, we mentioned that density is mass over volume. Multiplying both sides by V, we know that mass is density times volume. We could use lowercase m or capital M. So capital M, the mass, is density times volume. And we have the volume of the hollow cylinder. It's that formula. So I'm going to replace V with pi L times r2 squared minus r1 squared. Now, let's focus our attention back on this equation. I'm going to rewrite this equation such that we can insert m into the equation. So here we have pi times p times l or p pi l. So as you can see, this part is the same as that part. And then we have this part, which I'll write it here, r2 squared minus r1 squared. So right now I wrote p, I mean rho pi l and r2 squared minus r1 squared. So now I'm going to write what's left over. So this is times we have the 2 in the bottom, so that's going to be 1 half. And then what we have left over here, that's r2 squared plus r1 squared. Now, this part, as we could see, it's equal to m, so we could replace it with m. So we have the inertia is m times 1 half r2 squared plus r1 squared. Now let's make it look better. So I'm just going to switch m and 1 half and then we'll have our formula. So the inertia for a hollow disk, I mean a hollow cylinder, is 1 half m times r2 squared plus r1 squared. So that's how you can de derive the formula for the inertia of a hollow cylinder. Now, once you have this formula, you can easily calculate or determine the formula for the inertia of a solid cylinder. So for the solid cylinder, there's no inner radius. We only have the outer radius for a solid cylinder, which we'll define it as R2. L is still the same. So for the solid cylinder, because there's no inner radius, that means that R1 is zero because it's non-existent. If R1 is zero, this disappears. And so the inertia of a solid cylinder becomes one half m R2 squared. Now, there's really no point in using R2 if there's only one radius. So we can drop the subscript two and thus we get this formula. The inertia for a solid disk is one half mr squared. So that's how you can get the formula for the inertia of a solid cylinder and a hollow cylinder.